right? Uh, did you download the contents already, the library? Jerick, okay na? You have the library, right? Hasli, library, you can check. Uh, yes. It's okay now. Razak? No. What happened, Razak? I gave you the instruction. You have the installer. You downloaded the installer. You just double click it. Is that going? Anyway, you just download from the online. There's an option, right? Download the uh, online. Yeah, that, that is that option. Okay, since we are recording, let us now just share the screen. Nobody's online. We're just recording. And for those who are not here today. Okay, so let's start, guys. Today is the day for our Revit Structural. Okay? I will just be continuing to lecture and uh, we'll take a short break later on. If you want, you can do some exercises, but uh, um, I suggest, okay, you can do some exercises, but focus on the lecture that we'll be doing. Okay? And because anyway, this is recorded and later on you can do it, like like what Hasley is doing. You're doing it at home, right? Yeah. Hasley? Very uh, active guy, right? I will open the sample structural project in Revit. So since we have, all of us have 2024, you will see this structural sample. It's a heavy file, so I hope it works, but let's let's still try. I'll open the file right now. You know, this uh, sample of Autodesk Re Revit 2024 is an actually built building in the USA. Seems like the, the owner, they made an agreement collaborated with Autodesk. Autodesk did the design, but the deal is they will use it as a sample for uh, Autodesk. So Autodesk, you want to do them as well? Yes, yes. But it's, it is really a good uh, sample. It's like the real project in, uh, in construction and in design. So what you see on my screen, you know it already, it's a sheet, right? This is a sheet. Obviously this has several renderings and images. So this image is like some of the old, uh, the story of this Snowdon Towers is that there is like an old, old building in this area. And these are some of the pictures of it. So when, when the architects designed it, they wanted to capture the old, design so they use this as um, as an inspiration for the actual design okay so I, I know you've seen that if you open the architectural model you see that some of the some of the elements that are here have been um, duplicated or copied on the new one what you see here on the screen is the structural model package so this is a structural isometric view as you can see you have the columns, they used steel columns, I think, or maybe concrete, you know. Yeah, and they have some steel beams right there. So those are beams. And the column, yeah, it's a steel column right there. It's an H column. 
and they have uh, uh, these are like pile footing, footings no? foundation so if you look at the uh, project browser of this sample you'll see the structural plans no? structural plans and you have also the structural sheets so that's the cover sheet that we have they even added uh, learn about this project there is the foundation plan usually structural um, drawings or or yeah structural drawings are like this no? but uh, this sample is based on imperial units so they don't have the better units since this is built in the us they use mainly um, imperial which india is using also right? not use millimeters sure huh? yeah. but sri lanka they use it right yeah. i have a friend sri lanka i i designed the house for him he said i need it in feet <laughs> give me a big headache but it's okay philippines actually we are familiar also with feet and inches because we are like mixed up all of these things. Okay, so this is like sample and this is like parking. So these are, when you talk about um, structural plans, they call it framing. So the basic of, since you are not uh, engineers in uh, structural, I'll just uh, explain to you a simple construction of, of buildings usually they will have the foundation right then they'll put on the columns then after the columns they put on the framing which are the beams after the beams are set they put on the slab concrete slab and they repeat it again and again until they reach the top after that they put on the block works or gypsum or whatever is the partition Okay, and then they finish it up with the architectural finishes, plaster, paint, cladding, or whatever finish on the building. Then they do the interior fit out, you know, fit out, right? And then, of course, your your MEP guys will come to put the CCTV, to put the telecoms, and everything, right? To make sure there is corridor. Architecture is the main design. Structure is the, it's like the bone. It's like, yeah. the, it's like, the, it's like the skin and, and the functions is the architect, but the bone is the structural. Okay. The HVAC is the lungs. You get it? Skeleton is like structural. Yeah, structural. Lungs is HVAC because it gives air and everything. What is electricity? No, <laughs> Uh, they design the architect, right? You cannot use any structural inside, right? You can use there also structural. No, of course we need the, our building that we design. building. It it will not yet stand up huh. because it does not have columns. Huh. But the the workflow of designing buildings is the architect design it first. After the architect design and the the owner or the client agrees. Then the architect will hire the structural engineer and put the, the columns to make sure that this building will be built. So we can say steel, right? Yeah. yeah. Steel and concrete. Actually, a building can be ready with structure and architecture only, <laughs> but it will be dark. <laughs> there will be no light if there is no power, right? So that's why it's everything. Mm -hmm. Electricity, and you need toilets and there's drainage, so you have to put plumbing and everything. So it's uh, the whole building system. Okay, so that's what you're learning here in the, that's why we call it the Revit Combo. Okay. So this is just a sample project. It might be a little bit complicated for you already if you are not into this <laughs> field. But uh, see, there are plans, like the plans that we have in architecture. But this time they are focusing on the columns. See, these are columns. They will tell what kind of steel will be supporting it. And all of those things. Okay. I will close this file now. And we'll start with 
something. So before start our structural, we need to design first architects, right? Yes. In that only we can start our structural design. Mm -hmm. But in an, in another in other workflows, for example, somebody wants to design just to build a a warehouse, you know. There's only still yes, still structure can be done. Start like that. Maybe somebody wants to build uh, a a simple bridge. He can actually use the rivet structure to to make a simple bridge. But of course, all of these they work hand in hand. Okay, so I will start with uh with the uh, with a new project. I'll browse for a template. English metric, you already know this very much, right? Default metric, where is our default metric? It has to be structural, structural, where is it? Analysis default metric. There is no structural only, so we'll be using the structural analysis default metric. I'll click open and okay. So let's learn first the basic of structures. Okay, we will not build the structural component yet of our building. That will be second part of our lecture after we take a short break. Okay. So in Revit structure, we are also creating the, the grids or we borrow the grids from the architectural. Later on, what we'll do is we will borrow the grid from the architect. Okay. So for now, we don't have a grid, so we'll do our own grid for now. So the grid is also there. If in, if you click on structure tab right there, you also have the grid command. Okay, so we'll just put the grid, simple grid. Here also objects visible appearing, right? Yeah, all the tools are there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, let's just have a few grids. How much uh, result? Let's try 4,000. Enter. What happened? 4,000. Enter. And that's enough. Okay. And then copy this. Enter two. 4,000 and 4,000. Okay. Never mind the names. We can change the names of the grids later on. Okay. First, when you have the grid, oh, we always lock it, right? So in designing, let's say, uh, a structure, let's we have to know your tools first, what are available. So under the structure tab, you have beam, you have wall. This wall is a structural wall. So it's a strong wall, similar to the walls that are supporting the elevators or lifts okay then you have columns of course you know columns there's floor there is truss you know bracing beam you'll get to know that. these are steel connection we will not study that it's a bit complicated but uh, these are column footings isolated footings and then the other things so let us bring something in 3d let's go to 3d view and let's split the view so that you can see what's happening in the plan view. Okay. So let's start with a column. We'll not adjust our levels, that's fine. We'll just have two levels. Okay. I'll click a column. If I click column, I will have this column family available for me. I have this steel column, similar to the Snowdon Tower, the sample, right? If I click this, I will have a few more available, which is the concrete rectangular column, the usual one that we have. This is gypsum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that at the corner, maybe, that could be a uh, concrete. Ah, concrete. Okay. Concrete, right? So that's a concrete column. So let's take the concrete column. Let's say it comes in three sizes. Let's take the the middle size so if i click on the uh, if i uh, what am i gonna do i click on the vertical column okay i can actually place it along the grid 
If I click at grids, I'll select all the grid. It will be placed right in the middle. Right? Easy, right? Very easy. And then, of course, you just click finish when you're done. Instead of placing video, you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Have to be smart, right? Work smart. So, for example, you don't need a column in the middle or on one side. So, you just delete it, right? You select that and delete that. Okay? At least you save some time. So, after the column, usually a column has to have a foundation, a footing, right? So this is what you call an isolated footing because isolated footing is a footing for each column, one by one, okay? So I click isolated footing. Then I have options here. I have different sizes, two sizes for now. So let's uh, choose this. But if you want a smaller size, what can we do? We can edit the type and duplicate. This is similar to what we're doing in architecture, right? Click that, edit type, duplicate, and then let's say we want a small one, just 1,000 by 1,000 by 400 only. The last uh, dimension is the thickness. And we click OK. Of course, when you change this, you have to change this as well, right? So this will have to be 400. This is 1,000. And this is also 1,000, okay? That's the title. That's the type, 1,000 by 1,000 by 400. Apply and OK. So now we have this small footing. It's fine. You can also opt, opt to use at grids. Yeah. But since we already have the columns, you can just choose columns. Because we don't have a column here, right? It's better to choose at column. people. If you click at columns, you just choose all the columns available, and there you go. But it went up. It should be at the bottom, right? No worry, we can adjust it. Why did that happen? Because we went to level two. Ah, oh, we went to level two, right? Wait, let me undo that. We should be in level one, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So we do the same thing again. Isolated. We already have that done. And we click at columns, select all the columns, boom. There you go. Okay. And finish. Okay. And you can also place one by one if you like, right? Individually, you can place footings. Yes. And because and sometimes if there are places where um maybe it's off the grid, then you need to put a column, okay. but usually it, the columns are placed in the middle of each grid. Okay, so next, let's use um, beams. What are beams? It has to be the, the lateral support, right? So you can have steel beam or let's use the struct, the concrete beam, 300 by 600. Okay. We are still in level one, but uh, we want it in level two. So let's go to level two. Okay. This time, it is better to place it in the plan view. Okay. It's a bit difficult to draw here on 3D. Also possible here, but better to be in the plan view. So we have the beam. Click the beam. Okay. We have that already, and you can just click from here to there. Okay. Column to column, okay? And from here to here. Okay. Maybe you'll ask, why not just do it from this column to there, right? Because you're doing something with the concrete, right? The concrete will double if you put it on top of the uh, of the of the column. And structurally wise, they build the column first, then they put the beam next. Okay. And uh, okay. But you can do that sometimes if you have a steel column. We'll do that here. For example, you have a steel column that goes straight. Depends on the design of the engineer, structural engineer, because you're not just putting columns here, they have to put calculations. 
to make sure that this is correctly uh, done. Otherwise, maybe it will go like that. It will fall down. Okay, so let's uh, put another beam. Okay. Uh, okay, I will enclose this area. Okay, in there, another beam. Right there. Okay. Can you copy a beam? Of course, you can copy. You want to copy that? And use it on the grid. It will also work. Right? It will work also. Okay. Want to copy this? You can copy it. Also. Like that. Okay. Like that. And like that. Okay. So I want a big, uh, another column here, another beam here. Uh, this time I want to choose a steel beam. This is a universal beam. With this size. Now let's try this uh, 254. And start it from here up to here. Okay, oh, it's not that. It's a bit slim, right? So why why is it not touching here, but in the 3D it's touching that? You know the reason? Because our detail level here is course now better put it to fine so you can see that it is connecting right there it's a bit small i want to change it to the bigger one let's use the 406 yeah that's better okay so you have somehow a structural something then we have what you call beam system. So what's a beam system? So these are a series of beams, okay? But before you do that, you have to check the, the beams that you can use for this beam system. So you can decide, for example, that you will use this smaller universal beam as the series of beams that you will use, or maybe this HSS. What is this? Like a square? Uh, steel. Hmm? It's called, uh, ano yung big sabihin ng HSS? Uh, Eric, what does it mean? Hello square steel? Something yeah. like that. Hello square steel. If it's solid steel, then that's that's super heavy, right? <laughs> Imagine if you have like uh, 152, which is about uh, like this, by 152, by what? Solid steel. Me. Can you carry that, uh, Razak? <laughs> Maybe if you're Thor, no? You know, you know the superhero Thor, the one that carries a uh, mallet. Right? <laughs> Thor, right? <laughs> this guy is uh, strong, right? So that is super heavy. So that's why they're using this uh, HSS. So for our hollow, uh, I mean for our uh, beam system, we will use this two fifty four by one o two by twenty eight. So the the when you have an enclosed area, if you have four beams and you want to put like a series of beams, it's called a beam system. You can see it here in the image, right? So if I click beam system, it can be an automatic beam system or it can be a sketch beam system. Automatic, it is looking for an enclosed area, which is this, similar to when we're creating the ceiling, mm -hmm. right? So it's there already. If you touch, just touch one of the corners and, and it will detect that if there's an enclosed area. Mm -hmm. But before that, you have to make sure that you choose your type of beam, which is 254 by 102. I think I'm okay with that, right? And the justification will be center. Center means it will be centered like that, right? See, if I touch this, it is going like lengthwise. But if I touch that, it's going um horizontal wise and there is a distance it is a fixed distance of 1828 there's an option to put a fixed number let's say fixed number for example if i do this how many beams do we have one two three only right so let's say i want to have six so if you make it fixed number oh see it it kind of 
<laughs> it guess what I am thinking, right? I didn't even say it. Maybe it's a, <laughs> it has an AI or something, right? So if I do this, there will be six, right? How did it uh, predict uh, Razak? Huh? This is not scripted, huh? Yeah. We are going live. <laughs> so if I click this, you will have that beam system, right? So if you are building your house, usually when you build the floor, if it's your have a raised house, usually in in uh, Philippines in the old times, we build the house on stilts because they are afraid of the flood sometimes, and some animals during the night might maybe some snake go up. I don't know about India. You have house like that as well? Hi? On on the floor, you have like that. But in the Philippines, the old houses are like that. It is always like that. That's why when I was uh, in kindergarten, the first house that I draw is something like that. It's a house. There is always a stair. Oh, for you, your house is like this, right? Down, down only. Like this, on it. Yeah, yeah. Straight away. Right? Yeah, yeah. Pick, pick something you like. Like the Philippines. Philippines. Not yeah. much. Ah, yeah, like but that. Philippines, our house is, is like this. There is a space. Due to animals, yes. huh? Yes. Due to animals. And sometimes they use this also as the cage for the animals. Okay. They put chicken okay. and sometimes mm -hmm. dogs. Pig or dogs, no. That's dogs are pets. In they, they're here in the house. Big, they put them. Okay. Horse, no, the horse are big, right? Yeah, so they will jump. Out. Still, you guys are still same state? Hmm? Still, you guys are same state or different? No. Why it is? Um, nowadays, yes, but uh, they build the, in concrete. So they would they use this already as a parking area. Oh, mm -hmm. and people have money now. Areas. Yeah, people have money now. They buy cars before they just use the donkey or something. we don't have donkey in Philippines. They have donkey in India. Yeah, yeah. Philippines we don't. We have the buffalo. What are buffalo or we call it carabao? That's a big, big. black skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you don't have this? No, we have it. Yeah, we have that one. You have that, right? But we have also the the Indian the Indian uh, cow the buffalo the big one with this ox the, the big ox, ox in Philippines yeah. they are like uh, they are carrying caravans yes traveling ox, the, ox. Ox, like that. ox. that's back in the old days now this is only for. Some museum. It's not using, no, it is using vehicles to carry all of No, it's no Tata electric cars. No. Yeah. How much is Tata electric cars? India almost 15 lakhs, 12 to 15 lakhs. Electric, huh? Electric cars. Indian rupees. 15 lakhs. 12 to 15. Depends. So those only 1,000, how much real? Lakhs means uh, real, we can say. So 1 lakhs. 1 lakhs real. 1 lakh. Most, uh, 1,000. 60,000. 60,000. Reals. Reals. That's cheap, no? Just like one new car here, like a Nissan or something, right? Reals car. Well, Land Cruiser here is so expensive. Half million. India is expensive. The first car in India is expensive. Because one real, how much in India? 20, right? 22. Yes. Anyway, that's good. But but it's good, right? You have electric there. Yeah, how many electrics are you to They gave the interest cost of the very low in India. Philippines, not so much yet, the electric. They are more exposing the electric cars and vehicles. It's good, it's good. Okay, so let's continue. So this is a beam system. So if you do it here, you can do it because it is an enclosed area as well. So if I click here, I can change the settings. For example, not fixed number. Let me go for 
um, fixed distance of uh, how much do you want, uh, Rizal? 1,200. Okay. Let's do it like that. Okay. So that is like this. And once you already have it, if you select it like this, it will be selected. If you select one by one, it's possible also. Right? But better to select it like this. So you, if you want to change the beams, it's the beams itself. You can just choose from here. So beam type is that. You can actually choose other types of beam. If you want it to become the square, you choose one of these. So it becomes the square. So like that. Right? So that is beam system. So let's uh, try to do brace. What's brace? So for the brace, we need... Uh, another set of uh, columns so let's go copy this column okay and bring it up we always use this right copy to clipboard and paste it to which level level two of course and okay mm -hmm. what happened it doubled right so what's what are we gonna do let's just give it uh, a base offset how much uh Raja? We don't know the height, no? We did not check the level. <laughs> we did not check the level earlier. We messed up. So let me just... Uh... No, but we always have 4,000, right? Let's try 4,000. Okay. Oh. It's too small. Base offset is 4,000. 8,000. Ah, because the top level is level 2, right? Let's give a top offset also of 4,000. Oh, it's too much. So let's use, how much did it go? 3,000? Oh, I think base offset was too much. Maybe 3,000, isn't it? Okay, good result. Okay, so now there. And let's copy this beam also. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Five. Copy, paste. Again, wrong, right? You have to give offset again. Yeah. I want. I don't want to do it. I will undo it. And let's just add another level, right? <laughs> it's not right. Hmm. See, this is even wrong. Yeah, yeah. Let's have another level. So it's 3,000, right? So copy another 3,000. Okay, so we have level three. And let's choose the columns. Filter, okay, columns only. So they should... Base offset of this should be zero, but the base level will be level two, and the top level is level three, and no top offset. Correct? Okay, now we're good. And let's lift this up. Okay, but where is the beam? Let's select all the, oh no, just a few beams, right? One, two, Three, four, five, okay. Copy, paste, line to selected level, level three, right? So there's the B. So bracing, as you can see in the image, is like a, like a cross bracing when they have a column and the beam. Just like that. See the image? So it can be two way or it can be like cross brace. Let's just start something similar to this. So when you have that, you have to be in an elevation view, right? And you have to know at least your grid, where you will place the, the, the bracing. Remember that. So now we will have put it on grid number two, okay? And we will be on this south elevation, okay? So let's have south elevation. Right there. And we'll click on brace. Now it will ask you, where do you want to draw the 
brace, right? So you can actually pick a plane or you can just name it, which is our grid number two, right? So that's our grid number two and click OK. So now you choose the type of bracing. So let's just use a simple bracing, which is the square um, HSS 203. And let's draw it, let's say from, from here going maybe to the middle right there, okay? And then from there going, if you want it like this, that's fine as well, okay? Don't worry about the details of that. That should be fine later on. And if you want to create a concrete, uh, a concrete bracing for this, you can also do that. Again, brace and then choose a concrete if you like this. And you can draw it maybe from here going that way. Okay. Well, the concrete is more rigid. It is telling, it is showing you right away where it is, right? How about the steel is a little, acts a little different because the steel usually is either you weld it on one corner or you put like a plate where you will weld it or bolt it on the on the uh, structural element. Okay. So let's say we already have some of the basics. We have beam, truss, okay. Truss, where do we use the truss? Mainly for roof system, right? Sometimes you can use it also for beam systems if you have like bridges, like right? if you have a bridge, you can use a truss. So what are different trusses? If you click on truss right here, there's already a loaded truss here in the template because we use a structural template. If I click that, I have only one type, but I want to use others. So we load the family. Okay. And it will bring us to our library, of course, US. But are we in metric? It's in Imperial again. Let's go to English, US, and let's go to trusses. R. Trusses. Should be structural trusses. Okay. And you have all of these type of trusses. You have that usually for our houses, this, right? This is mainly for bridges, right? Without steel material, right? Yeah, steel. It can be different material as well. It can be wood, it can even be concrete, if you, if you like. So let's just, let's try uh, some of these uh, nice, you have pink trust, you have all these names. This they use for factories sometimes, right? For warehouses. And then. So let's just use something simple for our project. This, the six panel. Okay, open. You can place a, a truss on top of a beam or two columns. So we can actually place it right here, from here to here. And we can draw straight on the 3D from here, going right there. Okay, but it's a concrete one, right? Because the last call, the last beam that we use is a call, is a is a concrete beam. We need to charge. So you have to set as well. The beam that you will use, just like when we did the, the what you call that, the frame, the bracing, right? We set the type of beam. Okay, we're back. So I'll just cancel this beam and uh, I'll click truss right now, okay? And I have my truss selection, but before you place your, your truss, make sure that you choose your beam. So right here, it will give you the choice of the beam that you will use. Well, Uh, 
uh, edit type right there. You can choose the the structural framing type. Okay, you can choose the type of beam that you will use. So let's say let's let's use the HSS, which is simple. Where is it? There. Let's use that. And also for the vertical web. Vertical webs are these things, and the diagonals are like that. Okay. The top cords are this, and there's the bottom cord is the one at the bottom. So let's use one type because we are not really structural engineers. We don't know how to calculate all of this. Let's just use this. Okay, there is a bottom cord. Uh huh. You can use the HSS. Okay. All right, and click apply. Okay, and now let's draw it from here. You can actually extend it later on, but for now, let's just draw it from here to there. There you go. Okay, so you have your truss right there. So let's say you already have your truss. Can you modify it if you want to change the length, everything? Select the truss. You can actually edit the profile okay so the profile is you can add bottom cord and and all the all of those but we don't want to do that he actually this will determine the height of the truss so if you want it a little bit lower it will be like that since the this is a type of truss that is already having the that number of supports we will not change that we just click check now it became shorter, right? And if you pull one of the these edges, it can actually extend. You want to extend it on one end. If you want to see, if you want to provide like an overhang or something. And so that is manually can be adjusted. But if you want to change the height, per se, you need to go to the edit profile. Right? This, if you want to change it like that. You want it to be like a cathedral or something, but it went so much. There is a constraint on that. It is limiting at, limiting us to a certain level. Okay? Just like that. Save the project. This is just uh, documents in icon, in focus. B11 STR1. Okay, save. Okay, so that is a truss system. We don't have any slab. Slab is very easy. Okay, so let's have, let's say we need a ground slab right here. We go to our slab right there. Structural foundation slab. We just draw a rectangle. Okay, and click check. What else can you do in the slab? You need to have a ground support on the slab edge. You click that, you call it a slab edge. This is almost similar to the roof when we put on the um, the gutter, right? If I click ground slab edge, there's a default slab edge. You just click on the edges and you, I'm oh, sorry. Click on the edges and you will have the ground slab on it. Okay, so it will look like this. See, you'll have the support, right? Like a foundation. Okay. So what are the other foundation type? This is a foundation slab. So for example, you have a, a structural wall which is 200, let's make it a 300, like this. And you want to create a footing for it. You have now what you call as a wall footing. It will have a full support, like just like what you see on the image. Mm -hmm. So you click wall footing, it gives you an option 900 by 300, or the other one, or you can create a new one, just like what we did earlier. So we'll just choose this simple one, and then we just click on the wall. Boom, boom, done, right? So you can have your boundary wall now. 
simple detail of a boundary wall. Okay. okay, so easy. So these are some of the basics of uh, structural components that we'll be using when we create the structural design of our five-story building, right? The icon training center, the high one, not the not, not the in the exam. Okay, so let's take a short break, 10 minute coffee break, come back, and then we'll continue. All right? Coffee and smoke break if you want to smoke. Can I smoke? Good. Uh -huh.
Until you put something on it, it's a shame. So you have to convert your mask. Oh, it's done. Or it would have been better. You don't need to do this as well. So the best one is to just use the one. Once again, it's a bit heavy. Yes, please. It is a heavy. Oh, who did you watch doing with this? Huh? Well done. Yeah, one time. Yeah. 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 Problem. It, is, it is a mask. I don't think he did it here with the mask. He did it here in the modeling place. So how did he convert it into a... Uh, 
because right now it is a mass. And if you don't show the mass, right, it won't be there. Oh, yeah, you know. Yes, sir. How did you do your book? I model them. Who is it? Yeah, no. Ah, uh, what? What did you watch here? Yeah, this is the best of How many rooms do you have? Two rows, right? There's a big space with a big kit. And then this one here. Not to make it like this. You know, there's a big kit also. It gets so long with this. This here also. There are actually no families that you can download for this book, but it's a bit complicated. You want to see it completely. But this makes that a bit fun so many. Usually we don't do this anymore. We just make it plain and this video. I don't know how to do it. Because the idea is this is the whole story of convert into a It's an increase, nice, right? Yes. Let's get you know. Let's watch his video again. What did you do? That's that. Have some coffee. We need a big uh, what now? We need an after magic. Yes, sir, because that's what I can go to my boss with that. Hey, the boss wanted to study or something? Is that right? No. Is that style? Yes, you know, I need to put that in the standard. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Oh. Yeah. You bring it to Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Well, I want to make that from the bank. Thank you. 
Let me say, after that, the, after you meet one, you have to complete all of this all together. And then you put the finishing in the list. Very easy. It's already done. Meeting 
Before we go to the to our uh, big building, somebody asked me, "Can we use structural also for small structures? Say you have a box. Can you do that? Of course, we can use the thing, but you just have to make sure that you know what you're trying to build. For example, like a porta cabin. This is very useful now these days, right?" Porta cabin, what's the size? 20 footer. What's a 20 footer size? 2.8 high. 2.8 high? 6 meter length? What is the width? Uh, 2.45. 2.4? Something like that, right? So you have a box. Usually if I would do this, I will create a guide first. Like an architectural box, <laughs> right? So, for example, I will just create a model in place. Look, under structure, under architecture, I can create a component. I will model in place something, just about anything. I'll just click OK. And I'll just create a box, extrusion. I'll draw a rectangle here. So, what is the size? Two, let's say two four hundred by six meters, yeah. and the height would be one two eight hundred, right? See that's exclusion and click check. So that's what I'm trying to create. So this will be my guide, and I'll click finish. So the components of this is a steel support which I will just be using the HSS, hollow steel. So I need four at the bottom, four at the top, like your rectangle, and four uh, columns, uh, finish, right? So let's go at the level one. There it is, right? So we'll just go simply in structure, we can go to beam, it's a type of beam, right? Click beam, and this is the HSS 152, okay? So we'll just draw it from here to here, and then from here to here, and from here to there, right, and as well. You can just actually copy the other one later on. There. So you are you're already having this, right? And then what you need to do is just copy that to the top, right? So what happens now is select all of these. No, no. Select this filter. See? BJ knows it, right? And click OK. Copy and uh, paste the line to selected yeah. levels. So let's just put it to level two. But you know that the height is how much is the height? 
2.8. So we'll just drop it a little bit down. Okay. Click OK. So that's already there at the top. If you want to bring it down. Uh, where is the... Okay. Let's just select it again. There it is. Okay. Let's offset them a little bit. Minus 200. And another minus 200. Um, yeah, and level of set. Yeah, wait, minus 200. Minus 200. Okay, so you have it like that, right? Then you need the column. You can use column and again use your HSS, which is not here, but we just load it. You can actually go to your structural columns, US, not the columns here, right? You go to the structural columns, and you can use steel, and you can actually go to the square bars column there. So that's a square bar. If you click open, it will give you options of the sizes that you want to use. So what's the size you want to use? Height with, uh, so let's say you want to use, uh, this is CM, centimeters. Um, maybe these are big. 25 CM is what well, is big already, right? What is a good size? Maybe this, almost 5 CM. It's actually small. We have more, don't worry. There, maybe something like uh, 7 cm, that's okay, right? Almost 8 cm. Maybe there's 10, oh, there's 10 cm. <laughs> Let's make our life simple, 10 by 10, right? Click OK, and there we go, perfect. Place it there, and another one there. Why is it right there? No worry, we'll fix it later. We're having some troubles on the... Because we're putting it in level one, actually. But anyway, uh, but you know before that, when we place these columns, it is usually on the level one, right? So we just select them, and we change the level, right? Base level, level... Oh. Yeah, but there is an offset. So let's let's have the top level at level two and zero. All right, and uh, there is a little bit there. So let's put the top offset of minus two hundred. Okay. So there you go. That's the structural, and you don't need this anymore because it's just a reference. We delete this guy, and you have your structural component. And if you need to add further, let's say you already know how to put the, what you call that, beam systems, right? You can make it the beam systems to put the support on the bottom. So let's say we're in the level one. Let's put a, make a beam systems. Okay, give the project. Okay. If you want the spacing to be 600, let's say, Spacing is 600 to make it safe because this will be a little bit. And you want to use the a different uh, what type of this one, maybe a little bit smaller HSS, which is 152 or whatever. Okay, you want it like this. Oh, this is super strong, that <laughs> maybe we can change that, right? I think this is too much. This is too much. Yeah. <laughs> so the spacing should be at least maybe 1,000, right? 1,200. I think that makes sense, right? Or maybe make it equal. Fixed number. Let's just have four supports. Better, right? 
So you have like that. So if you want to do that also for the roof, then you can just easily copy it. Just like that. And then later on, you put on your facing your roof. And, okay. so, then, so this is the structure. Okay. Yeah, this is the first structure. Then you can put the your cladding panel and put the window, put the roof, uh, put the door, finish, and then put them all together later on. Once you're done, make sure that you create it as a group, right? When it's one group, you can easily duplicate it. And if you modify it, the rest will be modified as well. If you add one window, delete window, and so on. So this is your World Cup hotel. Before, remember, they have this uh, porta cabin during the World Cup, right? Yes. Two hundred dollars, right? Two hundred dollars for the one night. I'm staying there. Yeah. Staying inside. He's staying. <laughs> this is the cheapest. Back then. Two hundred dollars. Seven hundred reals. Very cheap, huh? That is the cheapest. <laughs> That's why this is what happened to Qatar now. <laughs> still, they're not uh, displaced. All the rents yeah. are high, still. Yes, it's very difficult. They want to recover. Okay, so this is our sample. On. Has Lee happy? Yeah. Okay, all right. Can you tell all the group inside? Oh, to group it, of course, you just select everything. Okay, and what is it? Group. Uh -huh. Create group. Then name it as Lee Cabin. Okay? All right. Yeah. Then you can add the walls, right? And you can add the windows and everything. But you just have to is set it. Where is your log? It is just here. This here in the file. Call. Again, I have to call the group where I can go. Same group, I have to call it now. No, it's just in the file. You have to open that file, take it from there, copy the clipboard, and paste. So, for example, if you want to modify it, you edit the group, and then you add the walls as you like. For example, architectural wall. Uh, you need to find a sandwich panel. I don't think we have a sandwich panel. <laughs> Okay. But you can create your own uh, sandwich panel. So we can start from, uh, let's say, a partition. Yeah. Okay, like this. And this can be, and you can just draw it just like that. Rectangle. But why is that right? There. Why can't we see it? Where is it now? None of the visible instruct ah because we are in structural plan. No, it's there actually. You click finish. Then what you do is you uh, you just change the because of the view is in the we change this to architectural. Then you will see it. it's already there. But where is it here? The view here is in structural. If you make it architectural. You will see that it's there already there. It's a bit high, right? You can modify it later. Edit group again, and then you select all of these, and you already know the height, right? Level two, minus 200. There. That's the cabin taking shape. Right? Window. Simple window. Now, this is a structural model. That's why we can place it here. We need to load all of these things. Okay, you do it in the architecture. So yeah. Okay, so we close this now and we'll go to our structural supports for our big building. Yes. So this is like doing it standalone, what we just did in the last one hour or so. What we'll be doing now is we will be taking the architectural model from the designer, from the architect, 
and we will act as the structural engineer. Okay, we will put the supports in there. So we need to start with uh, a template similar to what we did earlier. So we just start new. Browse and uh, similar to what we did earlier. Mm -hmm. It keeps going to Imperial. Structural analysis default metric and open and click OK. So what do we do now? We bring the architect's model. What's the command? Link. We will link the model, right? Link. Insert, insert, link Revit file, right? And we'll find the the file, which is somewhere in our documents. In focus, what's our file name? B11 R2, no, is it? Yeah, right? Okay. And click open. Boom, it's there now. As I uh, shown you earlier, some of the elements will not be seen because we are in structural view. But don't worry, we have what we need already. Let's look at the 3D view. So what you can see now is just the walls. Okay. Curtain walls are walls. Um, floors can be seen, right? And of course, we can see the grid. Now this is where I was telling you we will borrow the grid and the levels from the architect. Okay, so how do we do that? We go to the, um, let's go to the level one, okay? Uh, let's go to the elevation first. There's our elevation. We actually have a default levels from the structural model, which is this, right? I will delete them, okay? See, even the views are gone because I want to use the levels of the architect. So what do I do now? I go to my collaborate tool, okay? It's now collaborate tool. We have what you call copy monitor, okay? You'll click, select link because we have a link, right? Select the link. Click this guy, okay? You already selected it. Now in the process of copying. We will be copying. Click copy. You can actually click multiple. And do the selection. And of course, we can filter. They have a small filter thing here. We'll, we need only the grids and levels, right? And click apply. Okay, we already copied it. We're not done yet. Click finish. What happened? Did we copy it already? Oh, no, what happened? We should have copied it. Oh, something went wrong. Okay, let's let's do it again. Copy monitor. Select link. This is the link. Uh, copy. Uh, I think it should be batch cut. No, copy on. Then multiple. Let's just click one by one. One. Two. Three, four, five, six. Finish. Did it copy? There. When you see this uh, symbol, that means it's already copied and monitored, actually. Okay. So next, um, let's go back here. Let's copy again. Multiple. Let's take this time the grids i mean the levels two three four five six seven 
okay finish there it is right we monitor finish again so we already have now the grid the levels we have the grids we copied it one more levels we did not one more grids we didn't copy is the other side right the one two three four let's go to the north and let's copy this ones let's go copy monitor again select the link this and then let's copy click multiple let's copy this one click control two three four five all right <laughs> and finish now finish here first see you have now the monitor and finish right there okay so now we can have the plan views of this based on this so if you go now to your view tab you can click plan views and this time structural plan and you can bring all of this okay right where is it now structural plans we have this now right there okay so let's go to the basement level you know what we're trying to do now right columns, columns. because we trained in a small way now we went to the big uh, big event we already know what to do right so let's create some columns click columns this time we want to use the round column right do we have round columns we don't have what do we do we load it right go to the u.s structural column concrete i have concrete round column there right let's take it what's the size that i have 300 450, 600. That could be a good size. Let's go for 600. Because it's a tall building. No? It needs a good support. Now let's place it at grids, right? Select the grids. Boom. Finish. Which columns we don't need? We don't need this, right? Okay. So the others, that should be fine. Let's look at the 3D view. See, we're having columns right now. Oh. It's uh, support because it's the support of the uh, of the basement actually. Yes. So we'll keep it there that way. And then what do we need for this guy? Support right. Isolated footing right there. So we have these big ones. I think we need the big ones, right? What do we do next? Click that. Add columns, right? Because we know the columns where they are already. Select all the columns. Boom. But they are up again. What happened to us? Because I put it at level basement. It should be at the bottom. Okay, I will undo. Oh, okay. You're right also. Um. Okay, so let's select them. Okay, let's finish. Oh, it went down now. Oh, no. <laughs> what happened? Okay, I think he, he it's making sense. He knows that uh, he should be at the bottom, right? <laughs> because that's why he's called a footing. Yeah. He's not a heading, right? If it's a heading, he's on top, right? That's why it's a footing at the bottom. So what's next, uh, Razak? Beam, right? But uh, let's put columns up to the top first. Let's finish. One. Now, in, in structural, we don't really pull everything going up to the top. We want one floor, one column each floor. Because sometimes, the columns at the top, the upper floor, they are smaller. It decreases like that. Just like Burj Khalifa. Something like that. That's the structural concept. No, it is very... Yeah. Otherwise, you lose all your money. Lose all. The, uh, you lose all your money. You don't need everything. Like that. So right click, select all instances visible in view. Right there, we can copy. Right, we always do this. Copy, 
face, align to selected level, level one, right? Okay. Oops. Ah, uh, because we uh, level zero. Do we have level zero? No, the, uh, this offset is. Ah, uh, because what we did is our uh, we have the road right from the road up to the left, so we can add base offset. Ah, we have a base offset. This should be zero, right? Okay, that's right. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Base level should be basement, right? And then top level is one, and this should be zero. Correct? There you go. Correct now, right? Now, since it's still selected, it's highlighted, we can just copy that and bring that to the upper floor. Do we have the same height? That's right. Copy and paste, align to selected level, this time level two. Okay. Oh, it's coming. So let's say the low, the ones at the level two, you want to keep it the same size to level two. Again, copy the same, paste it to selected level, this time level three. Okay. But the ones in level three, you want to make it smaller now. You can it, right? So since you still selected it, still highlighted, you can use the smaller one now. Where is it? 450. See? It's center to center. It's still selected. Copy it again. Paste it. Align to selected level. Level what? Four. Okay? There you go. Do we have, an, do we have another floor? One more floor? Oh, is this the roof already? Oh, one more, right? Copy this, paste it to selected level, which is level roof. Okay, there. And uh, let's change it to the smallest possible, 300. There you go. Okay, and let's save it. I mean, let's uh, show this in, in a line so you can see your oh, it's shaping up now. Right? So beam, you already know how to put beam. Do we need to put now? No need, right? You already know how to put. You can put bracing to make it look nice, right? You can put bracing. So let's try to put some bracing somewhere. Oh, we need slabs now, concrete slabs. Because the slabs that you see here, these are architectural. What we can do now is we can... We can actually copy the architectural column, uh, struct architectural slabs, and convert it into uh, structural. Okay, so let's try that. What do we do? Collaborate. Copy. Select link. Use this link. This time, let's... Uh... Oh, did not select, right? Oh, it's not selected. Copy. Multiple. Okay, now this time maybe it will copy. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got the floors. Finish. Okay, no problem. Ah, we copied the uh, including this two. Never mind. Okay. Let's select this. And stop monitoring. Okay. You don't need. Okay. So let's uh, have all of these. Right click, select. Hmm. Why can't we select it now? Let's select all the column, all the slabs. Right? Did we select the bottom slab? No. Oh, we selected also. So let's select all the slabs. Filter, structural floors only. Okay. And we have floor generic. We can change it actually to um, concrete domestic. It's okay. so a domestic floor. Never mind the coordination alert. So this time, actually, all of the 
structural floors are below the architectural floors. So they are at least 100 mm below because they're the support. Usually you have the concrete, then you put the screed, and then you put the marble, the tiles, or wood, whatever thing. So we allow 100. So what we'll do is we will put the height offset of 100 below, right? So we'll put minus 100 for the structural floor. Never mind on the change. That's okay. But you will see it now if I cut a section that it is now not it is not clashing to the architectural floor now. See, this is the architectural floor, and this is the structural floor. They are now complementing or supporting each other. Okay. So let's say the structural guy is done, you know. He doesn't want to work so much on the structure. He wants to send it right away to the architect so the architect can check it. That's how you do the coordination work. So the structural model is done. You need to save this. I'll click finish first here. I'll save this now. File save as project. This will be B11. Uh, okay. SDR three, correct? And save. So, what? How does it look if we remove the link? Let's go to the link, manage link, manage, manage links. This is the link. Let's unload it. So this is your structural model only. Remember the Snowdon Towers earlier? They're showing something like this, right? Only the structure. So this is the structural component of your building. Actually, now these days here in Qatar, they don't use so much beams. They use the slab as the beam itself, but they use it very thick. Yeah. That's why we use it at 400 right now. See, this is good enough as a, as a support. <clears throat> So our design makes sense already. Okay. So we can now send this to Mr. Architect so he can check if it's okay. Right? So I will now close the file. And this is the start of coordination. Remember this workflow because this is the same workflow that we will be using for your plumbing, electrical, HVAC. What else? Firefighting, right? We'll open a firefighting, we'll, we'll open a mechanical template, and then we bring in the link. This time, we're not bringing only architectural link because we already have structure. We'll bring in two links when you start with the plumbing. Then when you're done with the plumbing, you'll open up a, another mechanical template for the let's, for the HVAC, for example, for the HVAC. Now you already have three links that you will bring because you want to see what the others are doing. And then at the end, for example, you're the last guy to work, the, the ITC, CCTV, you will bring all the links that are available so that you will see the building as it is on how it will be. Because you might be putting your, your camera where there is a beam that will block it, right? And you want to make sure that it is maybe on the ceiling or somewhere yeah. hanging around where, when you have this, with, uh, the pan and zoom type of camera. You have the dome and you have different types, right? So that will be the workflow that we'll be following. Okay. So now let's see how the architect will bring in the other files. So let's open the architect's file. Where is it? B11 Arc 2. There you go. Okay, so earlier the architect have only his architectural model. This time he can bring in the structural component to make it look real. So when he presents it to the client, he will say, oh, this is a real building because we have the supports and everything. Okay. And now he will see where the problem are. Maybe some columns will be blocking the windows. So this is what you call coordination. Somebody has to adjust. 
So usually maybe the architect will adjust or maybe he will ask the engineer to move a little bit here or there. Okay. So now let's bring in, I'll just put this in uh, hidden line. Same way. Insert. Link rivet. SDR3, right? The positioning is internal origin to origin because we did the same part. We used the same part. Open. There is it now. Boom. You have your footing already. Arras up. Your building will stand up now. Huh? You have the you have the support already. And if we uh, if we section it, we have a where's our section box? There you go. Section box. Then you will see that you already have the columns right there. And see the floor. This is the support floor. Actually, now our floor is actually a little bit big. We use 150. We are given only 100. So what we'll be using is, what we'll be doing, I will select all of the floors. And I will modify the floor now. Instead of 150, I'll make it 100. So I'll edit this type. I'll duplicate. I'll create a new one. It should be 100. Okay. And just change this to 100. Okay. And apply and okay. So now it's perfect. No more clash right there. See? It's perfectly fit. But we'll, we'll spot the other... Uh, clashes maybe somewhere in the window. Okay. So here I think the columns went out of the wall, but it depends on the architect if he wants to keep it like this or maybe he wants to change the type of column here on this side. Maybe he will say to the engineer, I need only the round columns inside the building, but outside, Perfect. yeah. This actually looks good here, no? On this outside. But maybe the ones on the sides, he wants it to be rectangular or something. So that is where the coordination happens uh, between the architect and then the engineer and the rest of the engineers. That's why there's so many people working on one single part. In the actual, actually, this can happen simultaneously in what we call BIM 360, where the model is in the cloud. Okay. It is um, located right there, and it is being shared to multiple so people. They are working through online. In online only. You can be in India, you can be in Sri Lanka, you can be in Ghana, you can be in Manila, I can be in Qatar, and we work on one single project. Real time. Okay. If we have strong computers, the delay is very, very less. It's very, very intense. But you know, this this technology, almost 10 years ago, is very expensive. They don't have the BIM 360 before. In my first ever Revit project, we are just using the office uh, network. So we have the, yeah, the, the, we have the central file. But there is one client back then who is selling the the, the cloud. The, it's not 360 yet. They call it cloud something. They said that the delay based on our check is around uh, 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, okay. Now it's just two, three seconds. Okay. But then it's so expensive that we were not able to buy it, even if it's a big project. And it's also risky because it's not well tested and, and everything. So back then, we just send it by uh, transfer file. I don't know if there's WeTransfer back, back then. I think we were just using FTP before. You know, the, yeah, yeah uh, like the OneDrive right now or something, like that. or Google Drive or similar. We use the supporting you have that, huh? Oman. You're in Oman back then, huh? Well, I thought you were in the place. Why you live, uh, left Oman? Oh, eh? Oman is a very nice place, no? Yes, it's cool. Only come to me, they can stay there. We can stay there. I can go to work. 
but things are very cheap there, no? How is Villa? Uh, yes. Everything cheap. Everything. If you go to Salala, there is too much cheap there. Mm. Muscat. Muscat. Yeah. And the locals there, they drive the taxi, no? Yes. They are not like here, then. Uh, and then Range Rover. Yeah, Rover. Uh, see was on this. <laughs> there are no labor for the beggars on the day. Same like Saudi also. Yeah. Some workers. Yeah. Right? Here is all the mudir, right? All this. Big shake. Only. Yeah, only. They will not go for uh, yeah, anything. Yeah. Even just after uh, finishing school, you will be manager, right? Yeah, directly manager, yes. Uh, direct manager. Because after two part, years, CEO, right? They part for one company. They, they own the country, no? We are just visitors here. No? <laughs> this is our situation, right? Yeah. One day, uh, I, don't know, I don't remember, maybe 15 years ago, I was parking in one parking, parking area. And then one Qatari guy, he took the parking. I was supposed to park. Then he immediately went right. <laughs> <laughs> then I went down. This is my country. <laughs> is it like this? Yeah. Is it like this? Yes. This is my country. That's actually, exactly. actually, in uh, in Saudi Arabia, they said if you get hit by the car, it's your fault because it will not happen if you did not go to their country. Okay. Huh? If you get hit by a local guy, right? This is my country. Why you come here? You die on the floor. <laughs> it's just a joke, okay? I will have to edit this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah, it's different. Like this. So what can we do? It's supposed to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Because we came from here. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. so that's why they don't go to our country. Otherwise, they'll be in trouble. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is my country now. <laughs> It's in Philippines, this is my country. <laughs> they can visit our country. They can visit our country, but yes. tourists are only. Yes. That's all. Yeah, you can. Anyway. Just uh, for lunch. Okay. So this is the workflow that we'll be following in the next you know, few days. Um, And so many things can be done in structural. Now that you have the... Uh, let's just show you the structural layout that we can. I'll close this file now. So the link is now, the file is now linked here. So later on, if we update the model, we'll just update the link. No need to remove it. Okay. I'll just say yes for now. So imagine later on, the architectural model will bring all of the link. Structural, MEP, firefighting, Everything. So you will see everything with the light, with the cameras, everything. Like a real thing already. Right? So that's how, that's why everything now is using Revit in your projects, right? Yeah, here is the real thing. On the other side, they know it works, right? They know it works. You can play the same stadium. Yes. I'm not of that, but I don't know. In all the projects now, it's, it's a must to, to be used because. Say to coordinate the electrical to make sure that it does not hit any drainage pipe, which is very dangerous. If you hit that, electricity and water, what will happen? Once you've done the design, also yeah. the implementation still something hitting there. Yeah, it will hit it, but yeah. at least they minimize it. Yes. At least maybe 60, 70 percent. So only a few things can be uh, solved at the site. And maybe you adjust it a little bit here, but not the major things, right? Okay, so let's uh, continue with the structure. I will open this. So follow this, uh, follow this video closely. I'm sure you'll be watching this and just create similar to what I did. Okay? Try to follow it because you already have the buildings, right? which is almost similar to what we did. So now here in your floor plans, if you look at the, uh, let's say, level one plan, you already have the columns, right? And if you, if you put the beams, for example, 
you can easily put on the, let's say, the structure beams. Let's say you want to use a concrete beam. As again, similar to what we did, it will just draw like this. Uh, we are in what level? Level one, right? It's supposed to show as dotted line. Why is it showing as a dotted line? Let me see. Where is the beam? Oh, there, it's actually in level, oh yeah, level one, right? Mm -hmm. And level one, right there. It should be a dotted line, uh, Rajak. Why is not coming a dotted line? Let's lower it. Minus uh, 100. Oh, sorry, sorry. Minus 100. Yeah. I thought so like but I am a dotted line uh Jerry. Tapat say la lim channel no no. No, yeah. Now it is under the slab, so it's showing as a dotted line. Okay. If we got the section view here, like that, go to view, there it is. This is the beam, which is actually, it is not totally under the beam, the, the slab, but actually in, in reality, usually this is like this, right? It is it's a line. It's usually like that. Like beams are supporting floors. Something like this. Yeah. So in plan view, it will really look like that. And it's easy to annotate. If you annotate it, you can just have you annotate it. Uh, you can tag everything. It tag tag by category. See? You can easily tag it and you can say. This is how they do structural drawings. They will say what is the size of the beam. So it's 300 by 600 right there. And it will tell you the, also the size of the column, which is 600. Okay. And you can populate that and put all the other details, similar to the drawing that I showed you earlier, which is the sample. Okay. And um, stairs also, usually there's a structural component of the stair. We usually use the monolithic stair to serve as the support for whatever stair that we have. Okay. We will not expand so much on that. But this is like the basic of, of, your, uh, of your drawing. Okay, so let's say at the top floor, let's let's have a steel framing for the roof, right? For the roof slab. So how do we do that? We can actually do it simple. We can just create a perimeter and then do the, what do you call that? Beam system. Beam system, see? So uh, let's go to the roof plan. Where is our roof plan? Roof. Okay. Let's create a beam. Structure, beam, steel. Let's go for steel. Let's go for the UB uh, 305. Maybe 356. Okay. Let's draw it. It's steel. So I will draw it straight from one corner to another. From here to here. Right there. Mm 
many beams do I have now? Okay. Let's change the 11, right? Okay. I think we can do something special now. Um, beam systems. Oh, so easy, right? We can do it like this. We can do it like that. But I think it doesn't make sense. Let's have another one here. It's too long. It's quite similar from here. Here. Okay, so at least we can have two sets. And uh, let's go to the beam system. Let's have one here. What beam do we going to use? Um, let's use the smaller one, the 254. Okay. And what spacing do you want, uh, BJ? Hmm? Yeah, one like this and one like this, right? But what spacing do you want? Uh, 1,500? Yeah, that makes sense, right? Let's do it there, okay? And... Yeah. But it doesn't make sense, right? It's very long. Yes, very long. Oh, we can do it like this as well, right? I think this will make sense even, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's have another. Let's finish okay. this. Let's finish this and let's divide this into two. Let's create another one here. So that here we will make it like this, right? And we'll make one okay. that, so that BJ will be happy with that. Beam systems, we have that. Oh, there. It's good, right? Okay. And then this one goes like that. All right. Then we can pour the uh, no need for a concrete here. We can just use a cement board, right? To close? Yeah, to close it. In Philippines, we use so much of a cement board now. Okay. Or. This line it will be. Uh, it's cement. cement uh, okay. It's not gypsum. It's almost like gypsum, but it's okay. made of concrete. And with fiber, so it's like strong. So let's look at the 3D. There. Oh, looks like a real building now. Yeah, like this building has two more buildings. Yeah. Actually, 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 actually. Which one? Good, right? It's good already. See, even here it's coming inside. And it's coming top of the column or middle of the column. Yeah. No, here, here. The, it is actually uh, on the side of the column. But you can also put it on top of the column. Okay. Because when we do the line, we, we, we started at the roof level. Yeah. The roof level is the top of that level. But if you select all of this and you put an uh, offset, right? offset See, you know it very well now. You're ready for MEP, right? Okay, yeah. After home, nothing more. Watch the video so you can. <laughs> but our friend Rajak here. He's very genius. Rajak the father, right? You know, some family care. Something is matching here. No, no, but if you just keep practicing it, and you, because you understand it, that's important. Huh? That's the best uh, thing that is. Uh, yeah. I can't only understand. He knows all the So we expect so much from him. Huh? <laughs> anyway. Finish. You tired? What else can we do in, in structural? So let's say let's let's try to have like a small bridge, simple bridge for another 10 minutes. Right? Did you mean where we can bridge actually some other building? We can make bridge. Yeah, yeah. Here, maybe let's say there's a road and there's a bridge somewhere. Okay, so let's assume, for example. I'll just show you some of the other things that we can use here. 
we have um, um, okay. Let's say we have a structural wall from here to here, and then let's say let's copy. Let's put a foundation on this uh, structure. We have the wall. We have the foundation right there. There are actually different foundations. Huh? What happened? Okay. This is a wall bearing foundation, which is just a flat foundation. Just if you look at the we have the retaining footing. Look at the retaining. The retaining is like one sided is is bigger, and then the other one is yeah. not big. So this actually can be changed as well. What can we do? Okay. Let's Oh, okay. We'll change this into, remember we discussed slope wall and tapered wall. Remember? So here we will make it, uh, where is the sloping? See the cross section there. Let's use it as a tapered wall, as a supporting wall, like a buttress. Like for bridges, we use that, right? You close tapered. Not compatible with the cross section. Set a layer in the wall type to have variable thickness. What happened? Uh, let's use uh, another type of wall. Maybe generic, 300. So if it's 300, is it possible to make it a tapered? Uh, ah, okay, all right, okay. That means it is asking us to modify it. Oh, let's use other type of wall. Those very thick wall, like this. And maybe this, okay? So let's try to use this as a tapered wall. Also no? Why? What went wrong? So what can we use for a tapered wall? Exterior. Can we use a tapered wall? Also, no? Hmm. Oh, that, that is another type of wall. There is actually one that can be used here. Oh, stop wall, maybe. There you go. This is the stop wall. It has two thickness. See? I don't know if this can be tapered. Let's see. Also, no. But a uh, stop wall is a good wall, which is, uh, it can be like a support for some bridges, right? We can edit this one, right? Tap on distance. Um, where is it? For sure we can. Uh, I think here maybe. In the structure right there. See the, the exterior 300 concrete, the height is 900. So if you want okay. to make it, let's say two meters. Oh, okay. we need to make that, okay? oh yeah, right. We'll, uh, see? BJ is good, right? Okay. Like, okay. Otherwise we... We have a problem with it. Let's say 1,500. Okay. Okay. Now, now it's higher, right? So we can use it like for a bridge support. So let's say we select all of these. We can just simply mirror it. Actually. If we mirror, mirror, mirror. 
Well, if you look at the 3D now, we have something like that, right? So this can be like a bridge. We can put a concrete wall here, I mean a floor. Let's go to the, or maybe let's put uh, some trusses to support it, right? Let's go to the uh, top view or level one. Did we create this in level? <laughs> we don't know what level we created this. Okay. What level is it now? Basement? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So maybe better if we rotate it correctly, right? This is uh, creating trouble for us. Yeah. Okay. So let's have some truss, simple truss, this guy. From here to here. Possible? Maybe, right? How does that look? Oh, we went. <laughs> It's too close, right? What if we move this? Oh, there, yeah, it's adjusting. Huh? Let's go to the plan. Basement. Take this guy, move it here. Did it go along? Oh, nice. And this, let's move them down. It should be at the way. Um, we want to lower it down. How, how do we do? Offset only? Minus one. Minus 3,000. Go down. Oh. Having a bridge now. The white bridge, huh? Seems like we need to lower this. Can we lower it? Yeah, that's better, right? It makes sense. Let's align. So we can play here. Hmm? We can play here. Yes. Whatever you want to make. Do you want to put it? What happened? So I want you to create your own uh, structure. Ah, I pulled the wall, right? Let's say here is a little bit lower, right? It's possible. Sometimes the bridge is causing something. Slope area. Yeah, slope area. See? So I want you to create something like a bridge. London Bridge, if you like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because London Bridge is like that. No? Maybe you have some bridge like that also in India. I saw one of the highest road bridge in India right now. It's a big road. They are creating it now along the very high mountains. What's the name? Oh. Yes. Yeah, no, they are I don't know, but it's it's something like uh, you have two hills, okay, and then you have this bridge, creating it like that. No, oh, that is for the army. It's for the army. Yes. This is like uh, kind of uh, like mountain, right? Now mountain. So if you create a bridge like this, I'll be happy. Or you want to create a bridge like in Doha, the highway going to the airport to Minabe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, from the Salor. Yeah, what you call it? Yeah, it's right? Salor, yeah. it's along the Salor. Salor. Along the Salor. With lights, right? Yeah, with the lights. Uh, yeah. So create something in structure. You 
That actually they use uh, Revit for bridges, and in this uh, the metro project, they use the. Metro project, right? Yes, fully Revit. You know the elevated uh, uh, stations like in the Mall of Qatar, Wakra. This has uh, this uh, steel structure. They use the Revit. Yeah, probably they go and call it to engage and for design. Yes, yes. And so many BIM people are there doing repeat and everything. There, there are so many companies. Big project. Yes, big, 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 big mega project. They're doing extension also, right? Yeah. Hmm? Extension. Yes, there will be uh, other colors. What do you have now? Red, gold, gold green. 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 Yes, three only no have. I think there is blue also. I don't know. Blue, blue yellow, white. Maybe yeah. pink or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> project or going on? The design is done. Finish. Oh, is it done? Done. Long before the, there has to be so many of these lines. I think one going to industrial. No, one is going for uh, Mider. Oh, Mider is enough, no? Yeah. So from Bilajo to go to Maitre, yeah. will not go to street number one? From they will connect one from Rosel to Alcor. Rosel to Alcor. Yes. But there, it's, I think it's a train or something. It's in Otra, Otra to Okay. So Jack. Okay, what's the one back here? Yeah, I'm going to